Well, it is time now for us to take a look at some of our Alaska headlines for this Tuesday morning. But first, a word from our sponsor. You know, if you're an Alaska business, you know the importance of keeping your fuel dispensers working. From piping to tanks to having to know how to actually fix the mechanisms in the dispenser at 40 below, you know, there's a lot that can go wrong with fuel during the winter. Even in the summer, dealing with debris and water removal, that's no fun. That's why you should call Inland Petro Service. They do everything from fuel additives to tank monitor systems, line leak tests to third-party inspections and service. They do it all. No job is too big or too small, even point-of-sale installation and service. Hey, above and below, in or out, they do it all. Give them a call at 907-451-1905. That's 451-1905. Or check out their website, inlandpetroservice.com. Let me see we get this right here. From Bettles to McCarthy, Northway to Beaver Creek, there is no place too far Inland Petro Service knows Alaska. Once again, their number, 907-451-1905. And online, that website is inlandpetroservice.com. Many thanks to the good folks over there at Inland Petro Service for making this available by sponsoring it with some actual advertising. You can do it as well. Hey, the FBI has corrected information regarding the child of the suspect of the Fort Lauderdale shooter. Remember back in November, he had gone into their offices saying, hey, I'm hearing voices. And it was reported that his kid was in the car. Actually, that's not true. His kid came in with him and was in FBI custody until the mother of the child came by. This, as the airport shooting suspect, has made his first court appearance. This happened yesterday. They are now looking at pursuing the death penalty for him. Meanwhile, the Anchorage Mosque has fielded calls about that airport attack. And people calling, and they're said, a spokesman for the mosque saying that they're thinking that these are goodwill people, just, you know, curious. Did this guy have any affiliation with you? And the mosque went and asked the FBI, hey, can we come out and say, no, he didn't, or is this going to mess up your investigation? The FBI said, go ahead. So officially, no, they had no interaction whatsoever. They did not know this fellow, Santiago. They said they'd never seen him before, and finding out that he had shot People down in Fort Lauderdale was a complete surprise to them as well. The mayor of Fairbanks, Jim Matherly, is proposing to shorten citizens' comments. Currently, they allow citizens who want to say something to the city council to, at the start of the meeting, speak for up to five minutes. He wants it shortened to three because there are some meetings that they haven't even gotten around to city business until 9 p.m. This is not the first time that this has been tried. Back in 2007, the mayor at that time of Fairbanks, Steve Thompson, tried to shorten the citizens' comments from five minutes to three. That failed. There's a new recovery plan that has been proposed for polar bears. But simply the plan is this, stop global warming. Yeah, they're saying you will have to globally reduce greenhouse gas emissions. In the Matsu, that borough is now considering restricting trapping for the first time ever. This has basically what used to be a large place of frontier is now becoming more and more suburban. A lot of folks moving out of Anchorage and out to the Matsu area. And they let their dogs run free. Dogs get caught in traps. The trappers haven't done anything wrong. It's actually the dog owner that is currently breaking the law by allowing the dog to run free without a leash. Dog gets caught in a trap. It's the owner's fault. Now they want to change it and outlaw trapping across the borough, or at least restrict it around the trails where people are more likely to allow their dogs to run free. Meanwhile, down in Kenai, that assembly is considering to start paying for projects even before the bonds have been issued, and because there are some projects that voters approved, but they haven't actually gotten the money from the bond sales yet. The Bogoslaw volcano spit out another couple of ash clouds over the weekend. It was actually seen Monday morning at 35,000 feet, and this time, this is from the Aleutians, now it was seen in the Pervolovs. So this is, what, an almost continuous eruptive activity since the beginning of December for Bogoslav. The Fairbanks Assembly is discussing the potential of expanding open hours of both bars and package stores, especially around football games, so that people can go and get something to drink at kickoff instead of having to wait until the uh, halftime. Also number of fires down on the peninsula this weekend that kept the responders on their toes. It's also a story in the Alaska Dispatch News about AGDC taking over the LNG project. If you haven't been following it, basically they are pushing this idea of we will build a liquefied natural gas project, even as the partners of ExxonMobil and all the others are saying, hey, it's not economical, we want out. And now they have a potentially costly to-do list from the feds in order to make this go. And lastly, 
If you are following dog mushing at all, the Knick 200 is one of the qualifiers for the Iditarod. Nicholas Pettit has held off the other folks in it. He Actually, he took the lead at the very first checkpoint and maintained the lead all the way through, and so he won the Knick 200. Congratulations. If you're not a fan of dog mushing, may I seriously suggest that you just simply go out and watch them at the start or the finish of one of the many races that we have around the Fairbanks area. If, if, if just watch this space. I'll tell you, we're going to have some stuff on mushing here at some point because it is super fun to, to watch and to do. And anyway, I'm getting off track here. <laughs> That's what we got for Alaska News today. Make sure you check out the commentary. Today it's going to focus on meme wars and how ineffective I think it is to try to engage anyone on serious conversation on Facebook or Twitter or any other social media. Also, if you'd like to become a direct subscriber, I'd love to have you on board. I do now email the audio only version that, and remember if you I'm, this is just a just a taste of all the news that's out there i do a full 30 minute audio version of news which i email to my paying subscribers and you can also be a sponsor at patreon make sure you check it out and tell all your friends about radiofreespeech.com thanks